John up in Russia. Let's start by taking a look and seeing who's in my green room tonight. My first guest is a genuine superstar and a music legend. She's won eight Grammy Awards. She's sold over 200 million albums, sold more concert tickets than any other solo music performer in history, and given us some of the most memorable hits of all time. I couldn't be more excited. Shall we be kicking off the show? It's Tina Turner, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Guess that, ladies and gentlemen? Yay! Why don't we? I'm trying to resist saying the obvious, but why find it? It's the truth. She's simply the best, and this is the reason why. <laughs> Here she is. It's the one, the only, Tina Turner, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Thank you so much for coming in. My pleasure. Um, now, you, you brought a bag on. Do you yeah, want to I brought you a present. Gift, which is to be encouraged. Yeah. I'm going to take this here and just see if there's anything good inside. <laughs> no. You're going to put good things inside, but that's just information. Yeah, this is all done on eBay. Yes, that's um, right. <laughs> Tina, so lovely to have you here. Thank you for joining. Thank you. Um, let's get this straight. Am I right in thinking you retired from performing? Is that right? Yes. Okay, when did that happen? About 10 years ago. Okay. And, and what was the thinking? Why did you want to stop performing? You know, I was always away from home, always away from home. A woman missed doing house things, decorating and shopping and just living at home, seeing the seasons of home. Never saw that. Always airplanes, buses, cars, trains. And I just really got tired of partying every night, every year, the same. The older you get, also you change, I think. Now, the reason why Tina's in town is they're announcing uh, a very exciting event. It's starting in March next year at the Old Rich Theatre. It's on sale now for the musical of your life, Tina. Right there, the Tina Turner musical. And I imagine most of us are going to want to go and see that. <laughs> because what a, what a life. Now, now um, what's the shape you're going to be? Is it going to cover everything in your life? Is it going to start from, from your childhood and go through to the, the various stages of your career? Or is it going to hit the ground running with you performing? No, no. It starts from that bush growing up. All of involved with the cotton fields and the church house, gin house, school house, outhouse, all of that. It's really quite old now, but it's still there. It starts with that. It starts with the grandmother raising me and the, all of the early stages into moving into teenager and then into St. Louis. Now, Nutbush, you know, of course, I know Nutbush. I think we all know Nutbush because of the song, Nutbush City Limit. But yeah. that is Nutbush, Tennessee, that's where you were born. That's where you grew up. Nutbush, Tennessee is right. Yeah. Then, uh, that's the photograph. Now, that, now, is that a particularly quiet part of the town, or, or is that the town? <laughs> <laughs> that's the town. Wow. <laughs> when was the last time you went back to Nutbush? Um, a very long time ago, actually, it was in the early stages when I continued, and I went back and visited the people that I had worked for. I was very proud to tell them that I was a star and all of that. Then we went to my grand the area of where I lived with my grandmother. All of those houses were torn down, but it was nice. I, I could feel the memory of where I was yeah. there years ago. I mean, I can't even tell you how many. You, you mentioned Ike, of course. You were married to Ike for many years, and, and of course, there were bad things associated with that relationship, and, yeah. and, uh, and people know about this. It seems particularly um, relevant now, what's going on in the world, and what's going on in show business, but you walked out, you just walked out. Now, how hard was it to get out of that abusive and, and dangerous relationship? Well, it was very difficult and dangerous because Ike was a violent person, and at that point, he was on drugs, very insecure, and I had no money, I had no place to go, but I just took a chance. I said, the way out is through the door. And while he was on one of his sleeping times, I just left the hotel, went out the kitchen way and down the, uh, down to the freeway, actually. And I remember something that during that time, I, I didn't measure the speed of a car and I was running across the freeway and this big truck was coming. And it went, rah, rah, and it, it felt like it was over me. And I thought, well, I won't try that again. But I had to cross that freeway to actually get to the hotel across from where we were working. So you took your life in your hands just to get away yes, from Yes, yes. Right there. Um, because when you were with him, he kept all the money from the act, didn't he? He kept all the money and... and uh, he, he kept everything. He always said, when you leave, you will leave like you came. Right? Wow. 
And why was it at that stage? What was it that happened then? Why was it you decided, now I, I can take no more? Had something specific happened, or was it just the, the build-up over the years? It was just time to not take any more. It was constantly abusive, other things going on. There was no control. There was no freedom. It was just the sameness, sameness, and the violence. And you just get fed up, and you say, life is not worth living if I'm going to stay in this situation. And I stayed there as long as I did because... I was trying to help him from the beginning when he told me about his life and how hard it was for him to get a career going. And I promised him that I would never leave him. And I actually stayed because of that promise. But then it got to the point where it became really bad, really bad. So it's time to go. And, you know, we've talked a little bit about your, the hard times you had with that, but what are the high points for you in your career? When you look back, what are the things that you look back on and you think, well, I, I enjoyed that. That's one of the most enjoyable things I've had. One of the things that I remembered was the first time I got a standing ovation or an encore. It was a television show, and I had finished and gone off stage, and that they started to... And I, I remember I came back out, and I was so excited, and I said, Do you mean it? <laughs> <laughs> I've never had an encore before. Wow. Well, I'm sure you had a few afterwards. Well, yes, after that I got used to it, and I found out how to handle it, and thank the people, and all of that stuff. You wait till you try it to leave tonight, then I'm going to let you go. <laughs> You're going to be here for days, you know. Right? <laughs> let me ask about some of the uh, other performers you've worked with, and people who perhaps uh, played a part in your career, especially when you came back as a solo artist. Um, because I believe, is it true that David Bowie and both Bowie and Mick Jagger were helpful and instrumental in you choosing the material? Yes, very much. They were... They were there like, well, first of all, Mick wanted to do the dance. David was just a gentleman and being there some kind of way trying to find out what he wanted to do with Tina because they were like brothers, kind of like brothers that you are close, close, close friends. Yeah. And then I end up doing um, an album with David and a live show. We were dancing tonight. There yeah, well, I've got a clip of that. This was live in 1985. I think it was in Birmingham. And it's incredible on stage. Uh, uh, let's tonight. watch this. And I'll get, tonight, it's a beautiful version. I'm going to ask you about this afterwards. Have a look okay. at it. Two most beautiful people on the planet, and my thought watching that is you're going to get a room straight after this. <laughs> that was chemistry, Tina. And that was chemistry. What did he yeah, say to you? Do you remember what he said no, to you? Because you tell us that. Because <laughs> you know there's speculation about what he said to you. I mean, you know they've had lip readers on that. No, no, no report on that. Well, let's have another look at it. Take a look and see if you can figure out what they would say to Tina. <laughs> So if you know someone who can lip weed, what's that? And you're, I mean... <laughs> okay. Uh, that's, I mean, when was the last time you spoke to David? You must have been close with him because, of course, he was just enormously sad. And so many of us were, were you know, sad and moved by his death. When was the last time you were in touch with him? I think I saw him in Brussels. And that was the actual last time that I went to his dressing room and we said hello and talked about the show and where he was going. And I remember the last thing I said, love you, Tina. Love you, David. And that was all. Oh, the next thing I heard, he was sick. And then after that, I saw a mom and I asked her how he was. And she said, he's okay because they kept it undercover. And then the news came that he was dying. Yeah, it was, it was a terrible surprise to, to almost all of us. Um, and you don't sing profession anymore, but you must sing to yourself. You must sing in the shower or you sing, you sing to your husband. I can't sing that thing. 
I want something just like this. I'm like that. I love that. That one I sing. <laughs> but if you hear a track that's associated with you, you must want to hum along to it. I mean, if, for example, you heard something like this going on, and this was just in the background, and it's rolling in, it must be kind of hard to resist just letting that tiny bit, just a little, you know... I don't sing it like that anymore. Oh. Oh. Let's hear a little bit how you tell you. Okay, it started the strumming of the guitar, and I had a step. <laughs> Every now and then, <laughs> kind of like to do things nice. <laughs> and <easy. laughs> Why? You have to say why. Why? Why? Because we like to do it nice and rough, and then we will. Huh? Uh, uh, uh. I haven't done that for 10 years. Well, <laughs> well you've still got it, there's no doubt about it. Um, you know, we, when we think of your performance, we don't just think of that incredible voice, we think of the incredible moves that went with it. Yeah. Uh, now, did, were you taught or did you develop them yourself? Where did that shimmy come from? <laughs> I don't know what that shimmy is. I thought I, saw I did mostly footwork, but I don't know. It was a pony, it was... Uh... You see, you're, you're shimmying right now, you can't shimmy <laughs> stuff. It goes with the dancing. The whole body becomes one when you start the dancing. Yeah. So the shimmy probably came out of the movement of what the foot was doing. And yeah. It was all connected. You don't perform anymore, but do you still dance around the kitchen like that? Ever? <laughs> Sunday, Sunday? <laughs> no, you know, a designer never wears his clothes. <laughs> a singer and a dancer never dances okay. or sing. Okay, let's have a look. I'm going to remind you, uh, you obviously don't need one, of, of Tina in action. Look at these dance moves. These are amazing. <laughs> So you're, you're very happy in retirement? Oh, happy. yes. I tell you, my last working day was here in London, and the two nights before uh, the, the tour was ended, I got a really bad cold, and so I had to stay two days later. So I went, I did the shows, and they were terrific. And then I got on the plane, and I felt like it was the end. I was with my cook, I was with my husband now, and I said, that's it. I'm not going back. Well, although, you know, all of us are thinking, wouldn't it be great to see you again live? And I was lucky enough to see you live once. But at the same time, I don't think anyone would begrudge you that. Because if anyone ever earned it, you certainly earned it. Thank you. Thank you. There's no doubt about that. And I see that. I could sit here and talk uh, to you all night, given the chance, but of course we can't. I'm just going to say thank you so much for being here. It was an enormous pleasure for me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Tina, standing ovation. I'm joining you. There you go. If you hear a track that's associated with you, you must want to hum along to it. I mean, if, for example, you heard something like this going on, and this was just in the background, and it's rolling in, it must be kind of hard to resist just letting a tiny bit, just a little, you know... I don't sing it like that anymore. Oh. Oh. I'm so thought we had you there. I'm so thought we had you.
Let's hear a little bit how you change okay. it. Okay, it started the strumming of the guitar, and I had a step that was... <laughs> Every now and then, <laughs> kind of like to do things nice <laughs> and easy. <laughs> then it changes to, you know, why? He'll say, why? You have to say, why? why? You know why? 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 Because <laughs> we like to do it nice. <laughs> And then we were, ah, 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 ah. That's it. Wow. We got our own big right here. I want something just like this. Da, da, da. I like that. I love it. I love that. That one I sing. <laughs>